Alright, hello there YouTube. So this is going to be a part two to avatar rigging for VR chat. Um, specifically, again, we're working with Unreal Engine 4 models, and basically this is going to show you how to properly import them into Unity so you can put them into VR chat. This is going to be basically just a final video if you're just trying to get the avatar into VR chat. Um, there's more videos to come as far as, you know, adding weapons, sounds, and all that kind of stuff goes, but I'll put that in another video. So let's get started. So I'm going to assume that you have, um, again, Unity downloaded, and I'm also going to assume that you have the VRChat um, SDK already imported into the game, or into Unity, I should say, um, and that's the SDK right here. Um, so we are greeted with our assets here. Never mind anything else under here, because if this is blank, you'll only have your assets. So um, what I like to do is um, I like to create an avatars folder in the assets, and I also like to create maps folder. If you create maps, then you don't, um, well, if you do create maps, then you want to make a folder. But if you don't create maps, you don't need to make a maps folder. I'm just basically showing you how to be tidy and organized for um, future endeavors and things like that. So go ahead and make a folder called avatars. And within avatars, um, you're going to have your scenes folder, where you're going to keep all your scenes, um, sounds for your avatars, and weapons for your avatars. Um, Never mind a lot of the sounds and the weapons, because I think these two folders I gotta actually organize. Um, I'm still in the process of really organizing VR chat a little bit since uh, I have a new technique, and plus all my avatars got deleted. Uh, all my Dead by Daylight avatars actually got deleted, so I gotta do all of them all over again. So if any of you guys are aware of my Dead by Daylight avatar map, yeah, so I'm gonna have to <laughs> do those all over again. But, anyways, so um, you're gonna create a folder and call it Models. And within models, um, you're going to basically this is where you can have all your video game avatar models. So for this instance, I made a folder and named it Dead by Daylight. You can also name it Dead Rising or uh, FIFA, whatever it is, whatever game that those avatars come from, just label it as such. So again, we're working with Dead by Daylight, so let's go into our Dead by Daylight folder. And within Dead by Daylight, they have both campers and slashers. Slashers are also labeled as killers. Um, survivors and killers basically um, and this is where I also like to put their weapons and for the survivors they're consumables so consumables being like med kits, toolboxes, keys etc you get it like I said if you're familiar with the game that is um, any kind of add-ons that basically the um, avatar comes with maybe from that game you can put in here like their weapons etc so specifically the avatar that we worked with in the first video was a slasher so we're gonna go ahead and go into our slasher folder and this is basically where you're going to have all of your killers, um, killer models, that is, your avatars. So we're going to go ahead and pull over the Trapper Apocalypse model that we made. And we're going to drag them in here. And there he is. And basically we're going to have an untitled scene. Every time you start up Unity, you have an untitled scene. We're just going to go ahead and drag them into the untitled scene. And we're going to go into Scene. And this is where you'll find him. So he's a little too big, so um, what I've done is I'm going to use my Leatherface as a um, kind of like a waypoint to uh, get him to be the right correct measurement. Um, if you don't have a other avatar that you can use as just a template, then this is going to be a little difficult for you to actually find the right scale. But once you've gotten it down, you basically have a scale for life and you can always just refer back to that scene. Um, as you'll see here, to basically scale down your avatar if he's a little too big. So I'll show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to go back into my models. Uh, go back into avatars, actually. I'm going to go into my scenes, and I'm basically going to pull out my Leatherface scene. Um, if I can find him. There he is. Okay, so I'm going to drag him in here. And as you can see, he's way too tall for Leatherface. So we're going to basically um, scale him down. So we're going to go back into Day by Daylight, and we're going to basically click on the model. And under Model, you'll see Scale Factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically scale them down to the correct measurement. And I think I've done this before, so 0 0.78, I think, was the appropriate scale for him. Yeah, so that, that's going to be the appropriate scale for this model. And uh, so... Alright, so he's all matched up. It looks like um, he's matching up with Leatherface quite nicely. So all we have to do now is just remove our Leatherface scene. And now we have a blank model. So this is where we're going to start texturing him. So we're going to go um, into our materials folder. So anytime that you bring in a new avatar, I should have mentioned, is uh, it'll create this materials folder. So every single texture that goes on this uh, avatar is going to be in this folder right here. 
pay no attention to the ones that are already textured. Those are for my other avatars, but just pay attention to the orbs, uh, the circles that are basically white. So we got one, two, three, four, five. There's six materials that go on this model right here. So uh, if, if you want to make this easier, uh, click on one, then hit. Um, while holding down control, click on the other one, and the other one, and the other one, other one, and other one. And basically, we're going to basically set the color on this all the way to pure white. So we don't have any discoloration in the texture. And you can use a different shader if you'd like. Me personally, I usually like to use Legacy and Bump Diffuses, but um, just for the purpose of this video, and I'm probably going to start just using standard shaders from now on for all my avatars just because it's simple. Um, um, you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to use any of these shaders. Just pay attention to the standard shaders. Now, if you're working with an avatar that has a hair texture, um, and I will cover that in another video with hair textures and how to properly use hair textures. Um, but if you have a, a avatar that uses a hair texture and you want it to be properly uh, alpha and all that, um, I will show you how to do that. But what you would want to use is the standard two shader, um, not just a standard shader. So if this material, for instance, was a hair model or a hair material, you would basically want the two-sided shader. But this character is bald, obviously, and he has no hair texture. So we're just gonna this is just gonna be a simple tutorial on just a basic avatar, really. So um, while you have all of them selected at the same time as well, you want to bring the smoothness all the way down. Otherwise, this avatar is gonna be extremely shiny in the sun, and we don't want that. Um, and next, we're going to basically import the uh, textures. So I like to keep my things tidy, as you know. Um, I created a texture folder. Um, you can basically create a new folder in here and name it Textures. And within Textures, this is where all the textures for our avatar is going to go for. Uh, this includes, you know, Leatherface, Spirit, etc., etc. So we're going to go ahead and find those textures. Um, so we're going to go in Dead by Daylight. Textures, Outfit 07. So the for Unreal models, I, I'm not really, I don't really remember if all un, um, material files are labeled as such, but I think they are in Unreal Engine 4. Um, the the plain texture file is going to be named BC, and the normal map is going to be N. These are usually the only two types of textures that I've ever dealt with or you really need. Um, you don't even really necessarily need the normal map, but if you want shading to be kind of precise with uh, the sun and where the direction of the sun's kind of hitting your model, then you'd want the normal map. But So we're going to click on BC, normal, um, BC, normal, BC, normal, BC, normal, BC, normal. So this is the legs, the head, the body, and the accessories. And basically, we're going to basically uh, just drag those into our texture folder and it's going to take a while because it's going to load here can't see it but it's in the background so once it's done loading we're good okay now it's done loading and we're also going to want the mask too so here's our mask texture file on its normal map and we're just going to drag it in there too and we're done so um let's see so for our materials um, you'll see how they're labeled accessory 01. Usually they're, the material is, well at least for Unreal Engine 4, the material is labeled respectively with its texture file. So all you have to do is really find this name, TR007ACC01, um, for the, uh, as far as the texture goes, and you'll find it immediately. So all you have to do is go under L, um, L, uh, Albedo, Albedo. I, I can't really say that right, um, pronounce it in other words. Um, click on that. And we're going to go on to TR007 um, ACC and see, we have already kind of found it. So um, the one that we want is 001, and I'm going to assume, yeah, so this is 001. Okay, we found it. <clears throat> and under normal map, we're going to type in the same thing, TR00, and there it is. There's our normal map for it. As you can see, the shading is <clears throat> a little off on it. That's because right here you got to hit fix now because this texture is not marked as a normal map. So go ahead and fix now. And there you go. Now the shading is correct. Um, so now we're going to move on to the next texture. And basically, you just got to keep doing this for every single texture. But you just got to find this name as the texture. So TR007ACC. And there it is. This is the second one. This is the first one. This one's the second one. And there we go. Uh, now we got to find the normal map for that too. TR007. And there's the normal map. And we're going to hit fix now. So every normal map that you import, you always have to hit fix now. Um, it always remembers though. So if you had to use the normal map again, it always remembers that it's been fixed. So you don't always have to keep doing that. All right, we're going to go into the body. So TR body. And there it is. 
And then we gotta find its normal map, TR body, and there's the normal map. Get fixed now. The head, TR body. Oops, sorry, head. There's the head. TR body. And there's the. Oh, sorry, that was the body. <laughs> I'm so off right now. TR head. There we go. And hit fix now. And here's the legs. TR leg. There's the leg. TR leg. And there's the normal map. Hit fix now. And there we go. Our model. Oh, wait, we forgot the mask. Whoops. Sorry. TR mask. TR mask. Okay. And there you have it, and then we have to hit fix now again. And there, so our model is now officially textured properly. Um, like I said, you will have to worry about UV mapping. The cool thing about most models that you've um, imported into U uh, Unity, um, they're already UV mapped, which if you are not familiar with what UV mapping is, it's basically, um, it basically tells the programmer, it tells the material where to be applied on the mesh, which the mesh is the avatar, where to properly be seated. Um, and, you know, obviously from the developers, they're automatically UV mapped, so they know where to go um, once you've plugged them in, uh, plug that texture into the right spot. So obviously if you were to say, if you plugged in uh, the body mesh to the head, you're gonna see the head's gonna look like this texture and it's gonna look really odd and really uh, just funky so that's what's cool you don't have to worry about uv mapping it's already done for you in most cases with most of your avatars um so for the mask though i think this is like a metal if you wanted to you can make this a little bit shiny so we're gonna hit um albedo alpha and we're gonna probably make it like 0 0.5 there we go it kind of gives it a bit of a sheen to it okay um Let's see, now that we have our avatar successfully textured, now the next part, and almost just about the final part, but third step, is we're going to basically have to rig this avatar now to work with IK support or um, tracking and things like that within VR chat. So what we're going to do is go into our models, Dead by Daylight, our slashers, and then we're going to select our trapper here. We're going to go into rig, and we're going to basically hit um, humanoid, and we're going to hit configure. And this is basically where you're going to save your untitled scene. Um, you're basically going to save this in the scenes folder that I told you to make. So we're going to hit save. So we're going to go into avatars, scenes, and we're going to save it here. So trapper, uh, trapper apocalypse right there. And then we're going to hit save. Since I already have this scene and I haven't mentioned it, um, I'm just going to hit overwrite. And I'm going to hit apply. Oakley doakley. So this is where you're going to basically rig it. It looks more complicated than it is, but it's already done for you for the most part. Um, with Unreal Engine models, at least Unreal Engine 4 that I've noticed with Dead by Daylight models, maybe in particular, is that the fingers always look really retarded, like they're sticking up. Um, they're not supposed to be like this. It's just the way that um, the automatic IK does it for you. So I'm going to basically pause the video and I'm going to correct this. If you ever run into this issue, I'll show you how to correct quickly correct this in one finger example. It's basically the ends, oh, whoops, sorry, move that over. It's basically the ends that you have to touch, so this end and this end, and what you want to do is mess with these up here, just this one in particular, the rotation, and uh, it's usually on the red rotation, whoops, sorry, it gets a little buggy, the red rotation here, and you just got to bring it down, and there we go, and that's pretty much straight. You just want to be have it straight. You don't want it like this. You want it to be as straight as you want it to get. And if it says, like, you have an error uh, an error that says character is not in T-pose, know that it is, and you can ignore this error. Um, this is the only way that i found that it works properly. So I'm going to fix all these fingers on this avatar, and I will be right back with the video once it's corrected. Ugly doakly. So, this is what it looks like when it's corrected. I have the hands in a T-pose position. All of them are straight, as it should be. Uh, even this one looks straight, so they're not all upside down. However, I think that middle figure could probably be raised up just a tad. Maybe like that. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, so once that's done, now the next step that we have to do for our rig is go under body. And you'll see an upper chest, chest, and a spine. 
IK support does not support um, does not support uh, the upper chest, so we have to delete the upper chest. So what's going to happen is we're going to basically bring C with B, and B is going to become A. So I'll repeat that again. So C is going to become B, and B is going to become A. So uh, we're basically going to delete this bone, but what we're going to do first is we're just going to drag B into spine. So come over here and drag B to spine, and then click on the chest, hit delete. Click on the upper chest, and bring C to chest, and then delete upper chest, and there you have it. This bone is no longer needed. Um, and then the next step, we're going to go into head, and you'll see the jawbone here. We do not need the jawbone, so we can hit delete on the keyboard as well. Oh, sorry, I ran into something completely off. <laughs> Hold on. <sighs> I ran into an error. I hate it when it does that sometimes. So I'm going to go back into configure. That happens sometimes. So click on jawbone and we want to hit delete on the keyboard and we do not need it anymore so it gets deleted. Um, we don't need to delete the eyes. Um, if you have eye tracking, which I specifically don't know how to do eye tracking, but if you have eye tracking, look at that, I can make them derpy if I wanted to. <laughs> but if you have eye tracking, you obviously want to keep the eyes, but um, for this purpose I don't know how to do it, um, So, but you can leave them in. So we're going to hit apply because we are now done with IK tracking. And that's pretty much it. Our last, um, maybe the fourth step and then the fifth step, and that's about it. Um, so our fourth step we're going to do is um, we're going to click on our Trapper Apocalypse in the scene. And I think I misspelled that there, didn't I? There we go. Apocalypse. We're going to hit um, Add Component. And we're going to type in Descriptor, or you can type in VRC underscore Avatar Descriptor. Um, and this little window is going to pop up. So. Um, let's see. So basically we're going to type in, um, eh, let's see, we'll type in maybe 1.8. There we go, there's that little ball. So the little ball that you have here, um, this is basically where your camera sits on your avatar. Um, uh, you want to bring this camera to maybe about the center here or maybe at the forehead but it may be in between the eyes i usually like to put it in the center between the eyes this ball basically just needs to be here so you just got to keep bringing it up until it reaches that point i think 2.0 oops 2.05 is probably the yeah the correct spot for it with my scale and i'm going to type in 0 0.15 and there we have it now it's inside of our avatar in between the eyes and there you have it. So the next and final step that we have to do now is basically just uploading it into uh, VR Chat, and you're done. So we're going to go into VR Chat. Um, I'm going to assume that you've already logged in. Um, you know, you're logged in as and all that stuff. So if you don't have this window right here, you can go into VR Chat SDK, and then just hit Manage. Uh, or sorry, show build control panel, and that will pop up this little window that I have down here that I've set down here to make it easier for me. So now all you have to do now is hit build and publish. And depending on the size of your avatar and polygons, it's going to take it a little while. Um, so give it a second. So uh, it's going to go over to the scene, so where you want to go is to the game tab, and we're going to hit unpause. And so this is where we're going to name it, Trapper Apocalypse. Oops. Um, you can give it a description, I never do. Um, you can also set some of these content warnings, I never do. I've had plenty of blood on my avatar, and I've never been harassed um, by the developers about this stuff. So um, it just depends on... Uh, it just depends on what it is. Um, like I said, I think it just depends. So if you have like a bunch of gore on him or um, nudity, you're obviously going to want to check these. But my avatars are pretty appropriate, I'd say, for just uh, general public use. Um, so if you're going to put it on the map or on a map, you'd probably want to set it to public. I always set these to public um, for um, my avatar map. Uh, we're going to hit, uh, well, actually, let's try to adjust the camera here. So we're going to go into scene. The camera here, we're going to basically bring it back some, 
bring it up some. And there we go. There's our image. Probably could bring it back a little bit more too. There we go. So now all we have to do is just hit to the checkbox to the terms and agreements that you have the rights to upload this content. Um, obviously the rights go to the Dead by Daylight team and staff, so obviously I take no money from this or credit, so um, go ahead and hit upload. And essentially once this is, uh, says that it's done and uh, you can basically hit OK on this and it'll basically uh, already be in VR chat once this is done loading and uploading. So um, I'm going to swap over to the game and I'm going to show you what it looks like in game. So this is what the final product is going to look like once it's in VR chat. Um, as you can see, everything's working as it should be. And as you recall, my fingers, I've had to adjust them and now they look like they're working just fine. So you can't really t see too much of a sheen on the mask, so that's good. And remember the rigging that we did with Blender, so the mask moves with the head. As you can see, I move my head around, and the mask moves with the head. And yeah, everything looks like it moves as it should. Now you can go ahead and play with your friends with this avatar. In a few of my next videos, I'm going to show you how to basically import sounds and weapons so that they can pull out weapons using their gestures. Um, plenty of videos on that, but I'm going to show you an easy way how to basically every time you make a new avatar, you'll be able to copy the animations stuff um, and copy it so that um, you won't have to individually keep adding new animators. You'll see what I'm talking about once I make the video. But yeah, I hope you had a good one. And uh, please leave a like, comment if you have any questions, um, and yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. I can play with the, the little chess piece. I feel like Darth Vader right now.